Welcome back. At this point, you should have Node.js installed and be ready to write some code. To stay true to years of software development culture, I'm going to start with a small Hello World application. We're going to write a simple Node.js app that prints some output to the console when it's run, and then extend it to learn a few other basic concepts. I'll start by just pulling up a terminal and navigating to the directory where I'll be writing my code. First, create a directory for your code. I'm going to create one named Hello World. Now I need to create a file for my simple node application and open it in a text editor. I'll be using TextMate since it's handy and doesn't require any setup. You can use whatever editor you like. Remember, Node.js is, at its base, just JavaScript run on the server side. So all we're doing here is writing some JavaScript and then running it from the console instead of from within a browser. To start, let's do some very basic console output. You should recognize JavaScript's console.log. For those of you who might have less experience with JavaScript, note that JavaScript is case sensitive so console and log must both be lowercase. I'll save the file and go back to the terminal to launch the app. In the terminal, we can launch the application we wrote by invoking the node executable, like this. Congratulations! This is your very first Node.js application. Not very exciting, but you have to start somewhere. As a bonus, we've also verified that node is running correctly on this system. Now, a short digression. JavaScript is really like any other programming language out there. The difference is that it has been, until now, almost exclusively used within the context of a web browser. Because of this, we don't see the same type of included libraries that we usually see for server-side languages. For example, if I were teaching C++, Java, or Ruby, my next trick might be some simple command line input using the standard system.io libraries. JavaScript in a browser would never have any need for command line input, so we don't get that feature out of the box. However, Node.js fills in these gaps with its own libraries, known as modules. You can see a full list in the nodejs.org API documentation for the version of Node you're using. Let me pull up a browser and we can check that out briefly. Here's the documentation for the current version of Node.js. We can see in the table of contents information on a number of system libraries known as modules. So, I mentioned command line input. Scroll down, and here we go. A module for reading an input stream called readline. If I click on it, I can see its specifications. Just like the system libraries in other server-side languages, Node API modules will become a key part of your toolkit. So, let's take advantage of this newly discovered module and give console input a try. Back to my code. The first thing we'll need to do is require the readline module in our code so we can access its functionality. This is the Node.js equivalent of importing or including a library. We do this using the require method. Note that the require method returns an object. This object is how we'll access the functionality of the module. For the readline module, the first thing we need to do is to use our module object to create an interface object, which we can then use to interact with streams. This creation will define which streams we're using. Think of it like declaring a stream reader. We pass in as parameters an input stream, an output stream, and a completer. This third parameter, the completer, would allow me to add auto-completion functionality to our stream interface, but I'm going to leave it as null for this demonstration. For our current purpose, 
our input stream will be standard in and our output stream will be standard out. Now we can invoke methods on our interface object to interact with the defined streams. We could use the prompt method to give the user a standard blank input prompt, basically a command line prompt, but the read line module actually provides us a nice method that more fits our needs, the question method. Let me pull it up in the documentation quickly. Here's the question method. The question method allows us to define a question string that will be printed to the user, so we don't have to take the extra step of printing a prompt to the console ourselves. In standard JavaScript event-based form, the question method also allows us to provide a callback function that will automatically be called when the user provides an input string. Let's go back to the code and add a question. In this case, we're asking the user for their name. I've also defined a callback function that will receive the answer string given by the user. Now, I have to do something in response to the user's input. Now my code will print a personalized greeting message back to the user. This will work, but with this code, once we start the Node.js server, it will never terminate, forcing us to use Control c to end the process. I can fix this by closing the open interface object and destroying the standard in process at the end of the callback, like so. And let me just remove the old console log command for hello world. Save my file, and that's it. Now I'm ready to launch this app by going back to the terminal and invoking the node executable once again. When it asks, I'll give it my name. And there's the output. Good job. We've walked through the standard hello world intro tutorial for many programming language or framework mainly for the sake of familiarizing ourselves with the Node.js framework and with using modules. In the next screencast, we'll expand on this space to create a new app that demonstrates a little more of what Node.js is all about, a TCP listener. I'll see you next time.